Hey everybody, today's an exciting video. I'm building up my dedicated bike packing bike. All right, why am I doing a dedicated bike packing bike? It's not necessary. You can take your everyday bike bike packing, but the bags rub the frame and can easily rub the paint off if you don't tape it all right. And I actually prefer a size smaller on my bike packing rig than on my trail bike because long days in the saddle, I don't want the longer reach. I don't, I'm not riding them as aggressively. I'm not tackling crazy terrain, so I don't need the more aggressive forward centered riding position. So I'm actually gonna be building a size small for this. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But I wanted a bike I could leave the bags on all the time because it can take an hour or two to put all the bags on your bike and get it all set up and ready for bike packing every time. And I want a bike that's just ready to go all the time. And I love bike packing, and I think it's such a cool way to explore and to go out and have fun on your bike. Like many of you, I don't have an unlimited budget. In fact, I have a very, very tight budget. So I only had about $200 to buy extra parts. Everything else is stuff I've had lying around or gracious donations from some of my partners like this fall line dropper post and my stem and a couple other cool things like that. Huge thanks to them for making this possible. But I wanna show that you don't need super bling high-end parts. Especially in the hardtail world, we have a lot of um, show bikes or fashion bikes that look amazing but never get ridden. And I kinda wanna take the opposite of that and make a bike that may not look perfect in every sense, but it's going to be ridden and it's going to be used. So I'm excited about that. And a bike packing bike does not need to be light. It just needs to be reliable and strong. And since you're already putting water and food and tents and equipment on it, it's never gonna be light anyway. So the weight's kind of compromised. So an extra pound or two on the bike really is negligible in my opinion. So we're gonna be using some cheap leftover parts from other bikes, along with some excellent parts from my partners. The heart of a bike is the frame, and that's what makes hardtails ride different from bike to bike. For this build, I'm using my size small titanium RSD middle child frame. If you've been watching for a while, you remember my first middle child was a small, and then I got a small titanium, and then I decided I wanted a medium for my trail bike. The medium is just a tiny bit too big and the small is just a tiny bit too small. So we can fix that all with the right size stem. But for long days in the saddle when I'm bikepacking, I don't want to be stretched out in an aggressive riding attack position all day like I do on my trail bike. My trail bike is for two to four or five hour days and I can get away with a little bit longer reach. It kind of strains your back a couple days in a row. So running a size small will be far more comfortable for long days in the saddle. And when you're bike packing, you're not charging, you're not attacking things, you're not hitting the steepest, craziest stuff anyway, so you don't need that longer reach, in my opinion. So I rode this bike as my main trail bike for a couple months, but it's got a little bit of wear, a little bit of dirt on it. I'm gonna clean it up, show you how I clean my raw titanium frames before we build it up. First up, I'm gonna use these Gojo scrubbing towels. I first discovered these working on cars, but it's kind of like that orange hand cleaner stuff you use to get grease off your hands. I'm gonna use that to degrease it all real quick. Put a link to this in the description below. One thing about these brush titanium frames, they show fingerprints and oil and grease and grime really easily. But even though they show fingerprints and stuff easily, they also clean up really easily. I'm gonna show you a few tricks to making this frame look brand new. And that's another reason I love titanium. There's no paint to chip, it's just the raw material, and I can uh, touch it up really easily. This work stand's pretty cool. I built it and I recycled an old Russian inventor's workstation and turned it into this little rack. That's been fun. Okay, we got most of the grease, dirt, and stuff off of it. These are really nice. You can just get into nooks and crannies, and they're great for your hands after you're done working, and they're great to wipe your tools off too. So I use these things all the time. If you use the links in my descriptions, it helps me out a little bit. I make a little bit of commission. The price is the same for you. Same normal Amazon shopping experience you're used to. 
In fact, if you use one of my links every time you shop on Amazon, whether it's your laundry detergent or a book or a movie, I get a small commission of that and that helps support this channel. That helps me be able to afford new cables and housing and be able to build more bikes like that. So if you don't already have someone who you're using their affiliate links and you'd like to support this channel, that's one way to do it. It's, it's not a lot of money. I probably make 30 bucks a month on it, but it helps and it helps save you time by me linking straight to the stuff that, that I find and I appreciate. So consider that. And if you don't want to, no worries. I don't feel good asking people for money, but that costs you no extra money and uh, it helps me out. All right, this is looking pretty good, but there's still some little scuffs and lines and scrapes on it. So I'm gonna show you how I get rid of that. All right, this is the maroon scotch bright pad. I prefer the longer strips and then I cut them in one inch strips, but this will work. You can get these at Ace or Home Depot or any home improvement store. And really what you're doing is you're putting the brushed finish back on the frame. So you actually scrape it a little bit like that. It's really light. It's not abrasive enough to cause damage, but it puts a nice kind of matte finish on it, a nice dull finish, and it keeps it looking good. So I'm gonna touch up a few spots here with that. All right, now it's looking pretty good, at least good enough to build it up and touch it up later. There's a few reasons I like the titanium frame. A, it's lighter, which like I said, doesn't really matter in a bike packing bike, but B is the ride quality. It rides significantly softer than the RSD Middle Child Steel. Way more compliant, way more supple. It rides like those steel is real bikes that always claim to have a nice supple ride. This bike has a really supple ride. And it doesn't rust, which is cool for bikepacking because we're often crossing rivers and leaving it out when it rains on us overnight. And I just really like that quality. You could save a ton of money and not get titanium and go with aluminum or chromoly steel. But this is what I have. I tried to sell this for a couple months and I got a few bites, but nobody was really ready to commit. And I'm glad because it's cool to have this for my bikepacking bike. This is my favorite hardtail I've ridden. The welds on this thing are perfect. It is so well made. I gotta give a huge shout out to RSD and their builder. For the record, I'm not affiliated with RSD anymore. In 2019, I rode their bikes. For 2020, I don't have a bike sponsor. I chose to step away from them so I could review all bikes. But this is still my favorite bike I've ridden yet. So, I'm gonna keep using it. If you do want an RSD bike, you can use coupon code PARTY to save 5% any RSD bike, that's pretty cool that they're still honoring that code for those of you that view this channel. All right, cool, let's get down to business.